Hello, hello, my moon and stars. Have you ever found yourself looking at other artists' OCs and wondering what makes them stand out so much? What about them draws you into their story, their design, their personality? While there is no one answer to what makes the best characters, there are a lot of ways you can bring more intrigue to your character as a whole. When most people think of how to make a character more interesting, the most to obvious topics are give them animal features, or wings, make them a demon, give them a ton of piercings and jewelry, give them interesting clothing. Uh, take everything with a grain of salt. <laughs> with that being said, whenever I sit down to think on how to create a character either from scratch or for a story, such as my D&D campaign, or try to expand upon an existing character that I already have that I just kind of realized is a bit boring, <laughs> there are a lot of things to consider. And keep in mind, all of these tie into one another. We have one setting. This details the environment, history, genre, and more that this character lives in. Two, clothing. Of course, what the character is wearing. Does it suit their environment? Does it suit their personality? If not, then why? Three, personality. What are some flaws of your character? Quirky habits? What are they good at? What are they really bad at? <laughs> Four, extra. This covers a lot of topics such as jewelry, superpowers, uh, magic, backstories, relationships to other characters, or even character arcs. Before we continue, I just want to give a huge thank you to my patrons. I was supposed to return to work after a winter break, but because of a snowstorm, my workplace has been closed for longer than I anticipated, leaving me without money to buy food or gas. Thank you to Din Din with Him Him, A Hartley, Ocho Kanoko, Octopus Lion, and Cinnamon Spiders. Okay, back to the video. Now, I don't always think about the setting when I create characters. Sometimes I think about where I'd have them after I've made them, but it is pretty useful to sit down and think about it if you haven't yet. Maybe your character lives in a cityscape with busy streets and dazzling lights. Maybe they live in the mountains, surrounded only by trees and what lurks in the forest. Maybe your character lives in an empty void wishing to see the light of day as they interact with imaginary objects, cursed to forever wander alone in a vast space of nothing. Anyway, if we want to bring more uniqueness to a character, consider where them and their story will be taking place. Uh, here, I can get an example. Okay, say we have a ballerina. How do we make her more unique with the setting? Well, I'll keep our options short for the sake of the video. She could live in a big city or a small town. For now, I'll go with the big city. I live in the US and New York is often the go-to, so how about Seattle instead? Uh, for me, where doesn't really, really matter. It's the importance of big city up north, which means cold clothing, usually. It's not much, but trust me, knowing your setting can inform other details about your character. Now, what was that other part I mentioned? Oh right, the genre. Let's go with horror. The genre is something you'll usually always know when creating a character, because if you make a sci-fi character or a fantasy character, you know where you're headed. <laughs> if you want to change up the genre of your setting, it can bring out interesting results. There's a lot of different avenues we can explore with a genre like horror. Our ballerina could be a secret killer. A friend of hers could be a secret killer. Or someone could be after her for some reason. The possibilities are endless, which brings more uniqueness and intrigue to your character. So now we know where our ballerina lives, but what does she wear? One of the easiest ways to spice up an OC is to change up their outfit, or give them multiple outfits to wear. This is why setting is important. It can inform character decisions. If your character, in a winter snowscape, isn't wearing warm clothing, figure out why. It makes it more interesting. A city boy might wear multiple layers, big shoes, and a fun hat. Someone in a mildly cold small town might sport a scarf or a warm sweater. Astronaut in space needs a spacesuit. A clown needs clown. But let's get back to our example. Ballerina girl. This outfit, while very cute, doesn't feel like a ballerina costume to me. Let's start from the beginning again with her costume. 
give her an easier hairstyle to keep her hair out of the way when dancing. I looked at ballet costumes and just made a simple one here. For her part in the ballet, let's say she wears gloves. Now, that's her costume, at least for the play she'll be in recently, I guess. Of course, she doesn't wear it all the time. However, in order to figure out how to make her clothing more unique, her everyday wear, I think we should just consider the next topic, personality. Is she shy? Extroverted? Does she have a particular aesthetic she really enjoys, like dark academia or cottagecore? Does she like dressing masculinely? Does she like exercising and wear a lot of active wear? Personality is where your character really gets to shine. In terms of making your character more unique via personality, consider minor flaws or quirks. Let's sidetrack and take a look at Rosetta from the Tinkerbell movies. She operates much like the rest of the Garden Fairies, but what makes her unique and stand out from the others is her refusal and almost fear to get dirty. Her talent directly contradicts this personality trait, making her different and memorable. If we look back at our ballerina, perhaps she could be an aspiring ballerina instead, still struggling with certain skills. Or she could be an established ballerina in the scene already, prone to jealousy. Remember what genre we picked for her setting? This could lean in. People are often contradictory themselves, so I find fun in thinking about the ways that my character's personality traits can also contradict themselves. Someone shy in person but a social butterfly online? Someone incredibly athletic but is also incredibly clumsy. <laughs> now, let's give our ballerina some personality traits. Let's say she's extremely motivated and often pursues her interests to their full extent. By this, she tends to ignore her own health and friends in favor of her pursuit. She finds making friends easy, being a social butterfly, but because of this previous trait, maybe she has a hard time keeping them. Living in a big city on her own, she's frugal and careful with her money because ballet is expensive. But she can't not take part in fashion trends, so she uses what she can by upthrifting old clothes and taking parts from other places. Maybe that's her backup job. Being a ballerina is not cheap and she's gotta pay for everything somehow. Now, Ballerina Girl has a base to work from. She has a lot more nuance as a character and has a lot of points to poke at and explore more. She's more unique than a standard ballerina and has a lot of areas to grow from from there. Let's go back to clothing now that we know who she is. We made a little standard ballet costume, but realistically it will change from play to play. We'll focus on her day-to-day -day looks. How do we make her stand out and look more unique? One of my friends, Pistachiomi, said that they usually try to focus character designs around one statement piece and center the rest of the design on that. If a character is associated with nature or flowers, then you can put elements of that in their clothing. You can give the clothing or character elements featuring the sun or moon, darker themes, animal or bug themes, even holidays. Ballerina Girl is, well, a ballerina, obsessed with becoming the best and upcycles thrifted clothing to save money. Also could be for her job. Let's look at some upcycled clothes for inspiration then. Denim is very popular. Taking parts from two different clothing items and putting them together to create interesting pieces that contrast in color or texture or fabric is definitely a way to make a character stand out. Following Pistachiomi's advice, I've seen the coquette trend take a hold of online fashion circles, and it's widely associated with ballet with its use of soft pink hues and bows. I'm really attached to the bow in her hair, so I'll see if I can sneak some smaller ones in her design. I might go overboard, who knows? <laughs> While I draw out an outfit for Ballerina Girl, I'll explain what makes certain outfits stand out and seem more unique and interesting than others. Shape language, silhouette, and color are probably the first things people notice about a design. Shape language means what it says on the tin. Triangles, round shapes, lines, zigzags, a healthy mix or an overload of one is bound to make it look interesting. I think everyone by now knows the rule of sharp makes a mean character, soft makes a sweet character. When making characters interesting, I like to play around with these so-called rules and flip them on their head. I might dress a rude or secretly mean character in soft shapes or colors to disguise her true nature. 
Silhouette is what I usually focus on more. I tend to gear towards big shape on top, small shape in the middle, and then big shape on bottom. Or the reverse. I love big coats and sweaters with tight jeans or shorts and big shoes. Or a nice tight-fitting top with big pants or a big skirt with small shoes. I love including dangling aspects from a character, like tassels, a scarf, belts, even their hair, etc, etc. <laughs> Color is something I actually used to struggle with. I was the kind of kid in elementary school who had all color days, where I would show up to school wearing, uh, well, you know, a yellow shirt, a yellow jacket, yellow pants, shoes, and socks. While an all monochrome outfit isn't bad, when wanting to make a character more unique, think of a general color scheme and a wide range of values with contrast. For Ballerina Girl, I've been using colors like yellow, pink, orange, and white. Let's throw in a muted blue for the denim often seen in upcycled clothing and work from there. White will be our lightest color, so let's use it in places to emphasize her silhouette or shapes. Yellow, orange, and pink are analogous colors, meaning that they're next to each other on the color wheel, and they look pretty good together. With the blue and her skin tone, they almost create a sunset. If we desaturate them to look at the values, you see that they create a gradient. No two colors are exactly the same value. Now, while these create a very nice looking gradient, they're also very close together on the color wheel. I want some contrast with her outfit, as is typical with a lot of the pieces we saw in upcycled fashion. So I'll play with different hues of blue and use that bright white for an eye-catching shirt. While I draw on that, let's take a look at hair. Hair, like clothing, is so, so incredibly important to a character's overall design and uniqueness. There are so many things you can do with hair. It's one of my favorite things to decide about a character. I strive for one typical look and then figure out a few additional hairstyles to switch it up for other occasions. You know, hair is just as much an accessory as the clothing. Hair can tell you a lot about a character's personality, where they come from, what, they, what trend they're looking for. Depending on the type of hair your character has, you have an entire world of style to choose from. Maybe they have short hair, medium length, layers, updos, ponytails, braids, curly hair. If you can't think of a cool hairstyle on your own, go to Pinterest or any social media and find people with cool hair. You can even steal a hairstyle from a popular character. Sega. The options are endless. Ballerina Girl has textured hair, meaning I have some pretty cool options for her hair, and realistically, she would change it up pretty often. For inspiration, I literally looked up Coquette Black Woman on Pinterest, and I scrolled through, saw some beautiful hairstyles, and decided for now on these really gorgeous twists. I like the shape and the volume that they have, which really adds to her character's silhouette and shape language. I finished the design for Ballerina Girl. She looks pretty fun and interesting, yeah? Earlier in the video, I mentioned another tip to make your characters more unique, called Extra. As I said earlier, Extra refers to jewelry, superpowers, magic, backstories, relationships to other characters, and even character arcs. I don't see Ballerina Girl indulging in much jewelry as a part of her overall character, as it's usually not advised for ballerinas to wear dangling jewelry that could fly off, so I skipped out on giving her jewelry, other than small earrings. But do you also recall her genre? That's right, horror. If we grab onto the superpower idea, my first thought for that is, what if she can see ghosts? How does that play into her story? Well, I have a few ideas. One, ballerina girl, filled with utter determination, is jealous of other, more spotlighted dancers. If she kills them out of jealousy, then having her be haunted by these dancers as she climbs the ladder to stardom would turn the story into a very interesting direction. On the other hand, if someone else is killing these dancers, then giving her the ability to see ghosts could turn it more into a murder mystery. Maybe these ghosts help her hone her skills as she tries to climb the ladder, all while attempting to catch a killer red-handed. Perhaps a rival is in order. Someone in the same spot as her, wanting to take the limelight, but unwilling to work for it. Or combine the two ideas. Make her an unreliable narrator, a secret, ma a secret killer masterminding behind the whole operation. 
revealed slowly over the course of a series of unexplained disappearances and murderers, she's behind it all of it. Ghosts linger where she walks, and maybe she isn't the one who can see ghosts, but someone else working on the case. Depending on the idea we go, that opens a whole new can of worms to further add more standout features and traits to give our ballerina. Who are her classmates? The victims? Her rival? The killer? Or the detective? Honestly, I'll let you guys decide. Now, we've made an interesting character from scratch here, but you can apply these topics to any existing characters. I hope I helped you with your character creation and introspection. If you want to see the artwork in this video in detail, consider subscribing to my Patreon. You can find other artworks on my Instagram at mavkai. Let me know what you want to see in the future from this channel. Uh, I have nothing else to say. Bye bye